Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And by the way, we are not conspiracy theorists. We are conspiracy scientists and uh, journalists. We are whistleblowers. We are the army of truth. And they, to tell the truth in, in, uh, in times like this, tyrannous times, is a radical thing to do. And we had Sheriff Arpaio yesterday releasing information, a very devastating information about the situation with the usurper in chief, the illegal alien, the apparatchik of the drug cartels and Mr. Soros and the banking cartels that are ripping America down and trying to force class warfare down our throats and saying if you're successful you didn't do it it was not your your uh, you shouldn't pat yourself on the back it was because p- other people built the infrastructure for you to be that great swimmer you to be that great architect you to be that great doctor you didn't build America you shouldn't think that you're successful on your own it was the government that did it for you I mean, how disgusting. And literally, he's literally ranting the rant of communism, is what he's trying to say, is that the state is your mother and your father, and you owe all your allegiance to the state. And uh, Obama needs to be removed immediately. We need Glass-Steagall in. And to help us with this remarkable analysis we have every week, uh, Harley Schlanger, or uh, one of the other amazing people from the Roosh Foundation, has real solutions. And, of course, the latest, of course, is that Iran is now trying to claim that they had harp weapons used against them with the climate. I don't think so, because the harp weapons would have been picked up by ham radio operators 100,000 times stronger than any radio station. What's going on is a disconnection of the loop current, because this administration allowed the drilling at Macondo, which allowed the BP to destroy the loop current, and now our climate is, is, is helter-skelter all over the planet. Combining that with the ice age and the disappearance of the ozone layer, we're in dire straits because food shortages and uh, commodities are going to hit the roof along with the controlled dem- demolition of Europe and the demolition of our banks. And, of course, Hillary Clinton isn't anxious enough to start the Mideast War, so they want to replace her with even someone more anxious to start World War Three in the Middle East, which will close off the Strait of Hormuz and all our oil. Harley, tell us what's going on because the most, the biggest crisis, and it's a long series now of disasters and scandals, is the LIBOR scandal and the proof now that the Fast and Furious goes all the way to Obama. This is just going on and on. And now with the release of the birth certificate of criminality, Obama needs to be arrested today. Well, let me let me start with a, a slightly different uh, view on this thing because. Look, I think that Obama's closer to being dismissed because of his criminal behavior right. on the banking situation than we'll ever get a chance to remove him on the basis of the birth certificate. Yeah, the LIBOR are, scandal is the, uh, is the closest one you're saying. It makes yeah, the most what sense. What I'm saying is that, look, the guy is an artificial person. Nobody knows really where or when he was born or who he is. But we do know that he's been working as an operative for global banks that he's been protecting them, and not just protecting them, but protecting them while they're killing people, while they're imposing policies that are destroying nations and killing people. And so good luck to the sheriff and his behavior and his activities and the people in Georgia who are bringing suits to court and everything else. But we've got a chance to get this bum out in the next two months, and let me tell you why. There's a shift that's occurred that most Americans know nothing about. And that's one of the reasons that Lyndon LaRouche uh, is who he is, because he it's his business to know these things in advance and to be able to forecast them and bring them into existence. What LaRouche has been emphasizing is that the European Union is about to crash. There's the, the problem they have right now is that debt is accruing faster than the ability to bail it out, even with these mega bailouts. And this is known to most of the leading bankers of the world. Now, some of them don't care. They're going for it anyway because they want the blowout. But what's emerged in the last, since July 4th, interestingly enough, is a small group of people in Britain who include top people, one of the top insurance agencies, and in, actually the top reinsurance agency in the world, Munich Ray, their chairman of the board came out yesterday for Glass-Steagall. The London Financial Times, the newspaper of the inner elite of the city of London, is now calling for Glass-Steagall. What's happened is that a group of bankers, including people with ties to the Rothschilds, have basically said, look, we're staring into the abyss. 
we played our game. Our game was to get Russia and China to capitulate. They didn't do it. So we need a fallback option to save ourselves in the short term so we can fight and win in the future. I'm not saying the Rothschilds have become good guys or that these bankers like the Financial Times, the people who run the Financial Times, that they can be trusted. What I'm saying is they have a better survival instinct than most Americans right now. And so they're saying... They're, they're more we, realistic. Yeah. They're, they're more, more realistic. They're facing the music. It's like uh, it's somebody, it's like to tell like an oncologist that's a cancer doctor and someone gives them a diagnosis that they got metastatic cancer. Uh, they've got to be realistic because it's to deal with every day. These bankers are criminals, but they're facing the music. They know that the game well, is up. criminals, and all their criminal accruals over the centuries are threatened by this blowout. If they could have gotten Russia and China, which is what they were trying to do, to go along with them by threatening them over Syria and Iran so that the Russians and Chinese would have given some money. They that's why that's really important. For another six months to a year. Back up just Russians a bit. The Russians and the Chinese is, said no. Right. You know, back up a bit, because what you said there was one of the most profound statements in probably a year, is the Syria-Iran crisis, which is being forced by NATO and the West, on, on the Middle East and on Syria and Russia and the satellite nations around it, the Middle East, is a direct, in a sense, a World War III economic attack and threat against China and Russia. That's right. Absolutely. And, 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 and then this literally, and the fact that the Russia said yet and the Chinese said, no, you're not going to do this, this is the real issue. Is The whole issue isn't over Sunni, Shiite, Muslims. They're just taking an ancient hatred and using it to be a useful dialogue. Well, and, to, and, and let me add another wrinkle here that, that will freak out our Republican friends, the ones who say, well, but we're dealing with Muslims. We have to back them down. We have to fight them. It's the U.S. military that allied itself with Putin in Russia. And just this last week, again, most Americans don't know this, but the Russian chief of staff, a man named Makarov, who you remember gave a speech about two months ago in which he said the Russians are going to move mobile missiles into place to hit the U.S. anti-missile establishments in Poland and Romania if, the, if Obama doesn't pull it back. Right. Well, that guy Makarov was... Uh, taken around town by General Dempsey, the head of the Joint Chiefs, where they had a series of meetings and they basically uh, worked out among themselves war avoidance policies. Dempsey said, we're not going to launch a strike against you. We're not going along with this. We're not going to arm the Syrian rebels. And basically saying, I don't care what Obama says. Now, so you put together... Well, what you have basically is a functional coup. What we have the military saying, to heck with Obama, we're not going to follow with World War Three, and that's what we're having. Is if it's major, if General Dempsey saying that, what he's basically saying, there's now a technical split between the Pentagon and military policy of the United States and what Obama's foreign policy is, including with their latest move to try to put John Kerry to replace Hillary Clinton, because as demonic as she is, she's not stupid. Well, and, and Kerry is. Kerry is, is lining up with that whack job, John McCain, saying let's arm al-Qaeda in Syria because we've got to get rid of Assad. So well, the, the two things that happen is the Joint Chiefs representing institutional forces in the United States defense sector and military said this war would be crazy. Under those circumstances, a group in the city of London basically said, okay, so we're not going to get our plan A. What's plan B? And what they said is, we need to take down some of these banks that are too big to fail. And the, the city of London has put out the word to the United States that they're prepared to go with Glass-Steagall as a short-term policy, which would end the bailouts and would lead to the breakup, breakup of some of these large banks. Now, again, the, the British Empire has done this before. They were always the leading free trade policy country. But it, right before World War I, they went with Alexander. Under Hamiltonian policies to build up their navy and their tank forces to be prepared for World War One. So when it comes to survival, they'll change their policies, and that's what's happened. Yeah. So another, and uh, and of course, uh, we want to come when we come back. We'll talk more about live with the LIBOR scandal, how it's expanding, and the cover up, and all of these issues. When we come back with Harley Schlanger from the Roosh Foundation, the RoosePAC.com. Glorious time to be free. What a beautiful world this will be. 
Welcome back, and uh, Harley, we have lots to talk about. Um, the, the LIBOR scandal and these other scandals and the birth certificate all are converging. Uh, I think it's really not an impossibility that Obama will be neutralized before the convention. If not, what will happen is if there is an election, because he's leading ahead of Romney and Romney's decisions are almost, uh, if you want to call it his campaign, campaigns being run almost to be make it a certainty that he'll fail. Uh, the latest rumors of Condoleezza Rice indicates we call it on the revulsion index. It makes it impossible, especially if he looks for his pro-life base to be there, and of course below the Mason-Dixon line. Oh, anybody why not bring back Dick Cheney? Exactly. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> so, the uh, we, we call her the uh, the uh, the voodoo queen. And I well, saw. I remember you know, Art. Instead so, of looking at the terrible scenarios, let's just continue with this new potential because. What, what I'm talking to you about, what we're discussing today, is not in the U.S. media, but it is reality. Now, as I was telling you, because the Russians and the Chinese didn't back down, a group in London basically said, okay, we have to retrench, we have to go back to some things that will protect our banks, and therefore we have to let the worst speculators go under through Glass-Steagall. And... We have to get this bum Obama out because Obama was put in for the war and the bailouts. Now, this led to two interesting developments. The first was that after the Financial Times and other key London networks, including Peter Hambrose of Hambrose Bank, which is one of the most important private banks in England, after they came out for Glass-Steagall, the LIBOR scandal broke. Now, these things are not coincidental. The, the city of London is very careful in what's done. And all of a sudden, the parliament had this discussion of LIBOR. Now, let me just break this down to as simple as possible. The LIBOR basically sets the interest rates that banks say they pay and, therefore, what they can charge. They lied. They lied about what they were paying. And as a result, they were able to... Uh, look better in better financial shape by saying they were paying lower rates than they really were. But then right. there was the other side of the scandal. When the banks set the rates, they would tell their investment section of their bank what the rates were going to be so that the investment section was able to sell bonds and sell insurance policies and things of that sort, knowing in advance where the interest rates were going. But the official story going out was a lie. And so their clients were, were buying and selling things based on the lie, while the traders in the bank knew the truth. And so when they sold in interest rate swaps to the city of Oakland or to Baltimore or to San Bernardino or to Detroit, they swindled those cities because they knew the rates were going to stay low even while the 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 terms of the interest rate swap was that if the rates stay low, the city has to pay. So they bought, told the city, look, we have to, you have to buy these things to protect yourself from the possibility of higher rates. And they went in and gave a pitch to the cities. The cities freaked out, forked over millions of dollars, and the banks that sold these policies knew in advance the rates were going to stay low. So the city of Oakland had to pay about $12 million extra a year on this. The city of Detroit, it looks like $100 million over four years. And as a result, the city of Detroit, by paying this fee to the banks, had to cut their police and fire departments. And people died. The murder rate went up. The number of fire deaths is up the last four years. In other words, people died because of the swindle done with LIBOR. Now, the second part of the LIBOR swindle is that Tim Geithner, the Treasury Secretary of the United States, and Ben Bernanke, the Federal Reserve Chairman, knew about this in 2007 and did nothing. Geithner's line is, well, I sent out a memo on it. Well, his job was, as Federal Reserve President in New York, was to keep the banks under the law. He was the chief regulator. He didn't regulate. He let them continue this, and then, when the blowout occurred in 2008, what did he do? He made sure they got money. Now, here's, a, here's something interesting. Barclays, which is at the center of the scandal, when the bailout took place in 2008, 2009, 2010, Barclays got $858 billion in interest-free loans. 
basically wow. a gift, even when it was known that they were manipulating the interest rates. Right. So what was going on is is a criminal enterprise of the highest order, and uh, what it's we have murder. is it's, it's murder. murder. <clears throat> Economic in the sense that it's illegal under banking law, but murder is being committed by these policies. Well, let, let's uh, invent a new term. I'm going to call it economicide. <laughs> well, now here's the, the the real point. Then, at the same time this LIBOR scandal came out, the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, which was set up as a drug bank uh, at the end of the Second British Opium War against China in 1859, Hong Shang acknowledged laundering billions of dollars of drug money from Mexico through their U.S. banking operations. And so this was brought up in hearings yesterday in the U.S. Senate. Now, Hong Shang uh, is at the, the core of the British operations, because this was the British drug bank. So why would they sacrifice that? Well, it was known that Hong Shang was doing it. And who knew it? People in the office of the Comptroller of the Currency, which is under the Treasury Department. So Geithner was involved in covering up the LIBOR scandal, covering up the drug money laundering, and he's being protected. He was promoted by Obama from New York Fed, the Treasury Secretary. This is Obama's scandal now. And so that's why I'm saying that this British decision to junk the bailouts, to, junk, uh, to go with Glass-Steagall, includes junking Geithner and Obama if we in the United States do our job. Right. The fact is, though, that we know that even the appointment of Geithner was directed by Soros and the banksters because they wanted to keep the lid on this thing because Geithner was aware of it since 2007 because he's involved in open documents knowing fully well what was going on with this situation with LIBOR. Here's, here's what he said in a memo on June 1st, 2008. Geithner said, we have to reduce the incentive to misreport. So that means, number one, he knew they were misreporting. But two... If you want to reduce the incentive to, to misreport, what you do is you jail the bankers who are misreporting and seize the funds that they made on their misreporting. Geithner <clears throat> did nothing. And so, in his own words, this is a guy who should be in prison as of tomorrow. Now, the question, and, and this, by the way, is a little more damaging than birth certificates and things of that sort, but it's the same criminal mentality. Now, one other thing. You put the Hong Shang Bank drug money scandal together with Fast and Furious, and what do you see? Essentially, the Obama administration is part of the drug cartels. Of course it is. And so people who have died from the drug war, people who have died from overdoses, the destruction of families, the destruction of communities with the drug operation, this also goes on Obama's plate and Eric Holder's plate. And so that's how we can get this guy out. There's lots of blood on Eric Holder's hands, and of course that's why he's part of the team. We'll be back in a moment with more. Back to the Nutra Medical Report and lots of uh, issues, but we need to talk about marching orders. Once the public gets fully aware of this, you mentioned uh, on the break the support for Obama, even by the Democrats, is a mile wide and a millimeter deep. The same with, with Romney. Uh, if they could replace Obama with another candidate, I'm certain that they would. There's been moves here in California to try to, to run other candidates in opposition in, in place of Obama, but those were quickly stomped on. They're having troubles with even raising money for their convention. The uh, situation with Romney is he only got about 30% of the votes <clears throat> at the so far. What he's really uh, doing is they're saying, well, the only one we have here standing is uh, Romney. 
which to be honest with you, I think they need to start the convention all over again and start from scratch because you can't win without your base. They don't have Christians uh, supporting Romney below the Mason-Dixon line. And if you put somebody like Condoleezza Rice, who's truly not pro-life, and it's just a, literally, I call it the revulsion index, is up at around 11 out of 10, we're, we're, uh, Romney will blow it. But the fact is that Obama is very possibly not even going to be there for the election. Well, here's, here's the thing that... That you, what, what you just laid out is the problem that we're going to have to get across to people because a lot of people hear this and they say, yeah, these guys are criminals, these guys are crooks, they're no good, but you can't beat them. And that's, the, that's not an American mentality. No, the American not. mentality was we can win because we're different. We're yeah, a different exactly. nation. We were founded on different principles. We brought the best from around the world to this country, uh, and we didn't start with landed nobility or, or special favors for rich people. In fact, our Constitution is the one Constitution in the world that puts power in the hands of the people if the people use it. Now, a lot of your listeners are out there saying, well, government's no good, government's you know, some people say Obama's a socialist. They say all sorts of other things. It's just not true. The problem with our government is the corporations and the corporate cartels have taken it over, and the people haven't taken it back. Now, suppose the government could be made to be on the side of the people. Suppose the government defended the people in cities and, and in small towns and people in local banks and local businesses and industries as opposed to functioning as collection agents for Wall Street and the City of London. That depends on us. Now, that's why I think it's really important to say that a gift was given to the American people by some really nasty bankers in London. They basically said, for us to stay alive, you guys have to help us get rid of Obama and get Glass-Steagall in. So this is sort of a, a gold-plated gift that was given to us. Now, the question is, will the American people pick up on it? Lyndon LaRouche has. LaRouche has been all over Washington. We've, we've gotten the word out in the Congress. Uh, I don't know if you saw these hearings, but Senator Carl Levin, who usually is, is a disgusting creature, actually played a very tough, hard role in going after Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. Uh, it was actually very impressive. Now, if we can put the Congress on notice that either they defend the American people or they're gone, along with Obama and Romney, well, then we can win this thing. Because right now, there's a split among the elite in the world. Some of them are saying we're willing to go to the total chaos because that's the way we're going to control things with a top-down global monetary dictatorship. There are others in their ranks who are saying that won't work. We've got to do something different. And therefore, they're breaking with the old Bilderberger consensus. Now, I'm not saying we have to support one faction of bankers against the other. I'm saying we have the instruments for our own nation to end this banker tyranny once and for all, using some of the bankers to do it. So why not yeah. do that? Well, I think the bankers are realizing that the game is so uh, out of control now you see, one of the big schemes that they've had in the past is they had to pretend to each other, even though they're playing with a LIBOR and doing these other things, that they always had control. It's almost like trying to ride on a wild animal and pretend to everybody while you're smiling on the wild animal in the stadium that yeah, you're not going to be eaten. Riding a tiger, exactly. Riding a tiger that you're not going to be eaten inside. There's an old uh, rhyme uh, by the British in India about the woman who rode the tiger, and then eventually the smile that she had was inside the tiger. That's right. And, and you see, the <coughs> British are... are very experienced at this. They've been doing this since 1688, but the, the families that have been doing it go back to the Roman Empire. So they have 2,000 years, 4,000 years experience with oligarchism. They didn't stay in power because they were stupid. They're evil, but they're very cunning, very clever. Well. And we outfoxed them. Our founding fathers defeated them in the American Revolution, and we established an economic system based on uh, government credit, based on regulation, based on giving the small guy equal access to credit. This was the American system, and when we've had it running, we're the envy of the world. And the British oligarchs have done everything they could throughout history to crush this. And they, they thought they had succeeded with the 
repeal of Glass-Steagall and the beginning of the euro right around the year 2000. But they didn't count on the fact that their system was going to blow apart this rapidly before they had destroyed all the nations. And so we have an instrument called the nation state. We have in the United States an extra tool called our Constitution, which we can use to defeat these guys. And so I'm calling out your listeners and saying to them, don't whine, don't complain, don't think these guys are too powerful. Some of the really powerful guys are temporarily hoping that you're going to bring down Obama. Now, why do you think there's so much negative coverage coming out of Obama in the mainstream media? Because there's a shift that's occurred. Why do you think these scandals are coming out? Because a shift has occurred. So we have to use the shift not to allow the bankers to reorganize and, and get back on top, but to put our institutions back in control. And so I would tell your listeners to go to our website, look at what we're saying on this. Go to the website and read about the LIBOR scandal. That's LaRouchePak.com, L-A-R-O-U-C-H-E-P-A-C.com. Go to our website, read the stories, talk to your friends, and then give us a call and let us know that you're committed to bringing Obama down before the Democratic Convention, because we're serious about this. Obama is practically out the door now if we get the momentum to get rid of him. So you can call our office in Houston at 800-922-2907. And just tell them, you want to make sure that Obama's out of office by the Democratic Convention. What can you do? So it's 800-922-2907. You can tell them you heard it on the Nutramedical Report. Dr. Deagle's been talking about this. You heard Harley on the show, and we'll get back to you. So one more time, 800-922-2907. If you don't make that call and you don't organize, then don't complain if Obama gets a second term, and that means you end up in a prison camp. Well, it's going to get, we'll have a combination of a Middle East war, the collapse of the world economy, probably start World War III, uh, the and destitution because of the, the drought and the, the <clears throat> right. We're going to have we're going to have basically bankrupt states. We'll have the breakup of the United States. The United yeah. States will not tolerate another four years of Obama. I mean, people yeah. saw recently the, the Hunger Games, which was out a few months ago. If they don't want to see the Hunger Games in 2022, they have to get rid of Obama in 2012. And we could do it. And the, the, the biggest problem we have is people who think it's impossible. And, you know, if, if we as Americans didn't believe in things that were impossible, we wouldn't be here as a nation. Well, exactly, exactly. Here's the point. And there's a lot of issues going on. The German bank also ruling on the ESM in September. Uh, basically, Germany is not going to back up the European uh, banking mess. They can't. Have, they can't they afford can't, it. They can't afford it. And even if they did, it wouldn't be enough money. And we have, of course... It wouldn't be enough money anyway. They already calculated it out and figured out, oh, we're good at math. The Germans are very good at math. And they know it won't, it won't make any difference. They've and of course, it's weren't. It's called Weimar. Exactly. And we'll talk about the Russian minister Lavrov and refuses to blink on Syria when we come back. News with Tim Alexander. He'll be back in hour number three. Uh, Tim, uh, tell us about this latest news that's broke out. Okay, in well, city. the world has just taken two major steps towards a third world war. Four senior members of the Assad government have been uh, killed in a bomb blast. Assad's brother-in-law, who uh, basically was the, the top internal security person, the defense minister, an assistant vice president, and the interior minister are all killed. Many others are injured. Uh, many in the Middle East, including the, the Israelis and the Americans, are now very concerned, publicly stating that concern that, that Assad may, may launch uh, his missiles. Uh, secondly, coincidentally, if you believe in coincidences, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Coincidentally, there has been a major terrorism incident in Europe, in Bulgaria, on a bus carrying Israeli tourists. Seven confirmed dead, 35 injured. Uh, Iran uh, is already being blamed by none other than Bibi Netanyahu. 
my choice of the uh, century for the Antichrist. Uh, he is saying that uh, Israel will respond. So, uh, Katie, bar the door. It would, they, we just had a one-two punch uh, out of the blue. They took out most of the top Syrian uh, military and internal security leadership and struck at Assad's family, his wife's brother. And uh, also, of course, you've got this uh, a terrorism incident, which could well be a false flag operation that killed a bunch of uh, innocent uh, Israeli civilians that immediately Netanyahu blames the, the Iranians for. So we are moving very rapidly towards uh, global warfare. Right. And this means things are going to get much more nuts, much more quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and of course, what we've just been talking about is that here's an, the, an opportunity with the scandals that are coming out for the American people to come back and use these scandals to bring down Obama. And what does is, what is the, the controllers of Obama do? They move us into a closer situation with World War Three. Of course. Uh, yeah. It's a classic so example the, the of changing the subject. The world economy is in such a shape by deliberate, by deliberate uh, uh, manipulation of it uh, to get us to this point. They have to have a global war to be able to smack down the population, to control the writing, to control the revolutions. Uh, and it, this is all part of a mix. This is the devil's brew. This is the, corner, the perfect carnicopia from hell. And it's unloading on us uh, increasingly now. And this, we've had, this is a one-two punch that just happened within the last couple of hours. Right. So uh, it's... it's <laughs> It's scary. I, I'm, I will be back, guys. You said, uh, what, two hours? Uh, in an in hour. In, in, uh, we'll be back in one hour. One hour. That's the... Okay, yeah. That's it'll right. be four, four o'clock your time, central time, yeah. Uh, okay, that'll be fine. So, uh, God uh, bless, guys. This is uh, yeah. not be a heck of a we'll, day. We'll have uh, Michael Velarde on the hour three, and we're going to be talking about this LIBOR and the latest scandal with uh, Sheriff Pyle's revelations. We have the video clips up of his press conferences already posted up today. They'll be on both websites, Nutramedical and Clay and Iron, and uh, read the Western Journalism articles as well. Uh, Harley... Well, There's so many a, issues. It's clear why we've got to move to get Obama out now. Right. In other words, here, here's the consequences. If we have Obama, we have banking collapse, starvation, we have the uh, bankruptcy of America. Three. And World War Three. And by the way, what you have to understand is the judgments that we've had now with Judge Roberts guarantees that in January 2014 uh, that we're going to have health care that people would rather pay the penalty, because there's no penalty according to this judgment by Roberts, for not paying uh, paying exorbitant rates for, for your uh, insurance. Well, it's going to turn millions of people into tax evaders because Roberts right. ruled that it's a tax and therefore it's legal. <laughs> but also you can evade it and there's no consequence. And he said the only consequence is that you're going to have the penalty. The penalty is smaller than the insurance because the insurance premiums are estimated that are going to go up 30 to 50 percent at least. And what that will do is bankrupt many doctors and clinics and offices. Many of them will not be able to continue practicing, and what will happen is the healthcare system will fall apart. And uh, you know, at I, the same time, here's a question I'd like to pose: that, that uh, clearly we are supporting people in Syria who are deadly killers, and isn't this what our complaint about Assad is? But what Assad, you know, Syria has never conducted terror operations. There's no evidence that Syria was involved in, in conducting terrorism uh, against other countries. The people who are overthrowing Assad that the United States is supporting are tied to Libyan al-Qaeda, Iraqi al-Qaeda, and they're using terror bombings to try to win power. Right. So this raises the question, again, of President Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, uh, who's the one of the leading killers in the world right now with the drones, and now he's supporting this this gang of uh, supposed Syrian opposition. The fighters on the ground are not Syrian; they're from Saudi Arabia, Qatar. Uh, they're they're from Iraq. They're from Libya. So I, I think unless there's a, a, a shift toward sanity, which move, is a move to get them out, and, and it's going to have to happen quickly. We're really talking about doing something in the next month because the, the Republican convention starts 
uh, a month and a week from now, five weeks from now, six weeks from now. The Democratic Convention is a week after that. We've got to have a mo- movement in this country to bring Obama out of the White House and bring him probably in a perp walk and handcuffs for his role with Geithner in right. the biggest fraud of human history with this interest wow. rate rigging that they did nothing to stop. And Obama has been president for three and a half years. The people he appointed to protect us from this have not done the job. Well, they're, they're responsible. They're, pro- they're protecting the whole scheme that's been going on, the whole scam. And uh, this situation, basically, along with all the other things like Obama taking ru- uh, rulings from the United Nations and NATO to decide to do war against Libya and and uh, Iran and now Syria, we know we have special forces operating there. We know that they basically well, given a. Well, I just came across that after Obama and Putin had a discussion. Uh, Obama told Putin, "Why don't you join us now to get Assad out?" And Putin said, "Absolutely not. There's no reason to get him out." And Russia is going to continue, as we talked about earlier. Lavrov said Russia will veto any U.N. security resolution which calls for regime change because that's a violation of the U.N. Charter. And under the U.N. Charter, you're not allowed to overthrow a government. Right. So well, I, I, is, the irony is the Russians are standing for international law, and the U.S. and the British and our allies are... The outlaws, the, the, the Hitler rogues, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, this battle raging uh, is basically they try to do a decapitation. It's called a, uh, it's called a, uh, uh, I think it's called a court de main, where they basically try to decapitate the government. So this attempt to kill his brother, and they, killed, they did succeed in killing his brother-in-law and other major people in, in uh, Syria. I think that at this point Syria is going to do something. It would well, not at all think, surprise me. I think what they're going to do is they're going to continue to fight the so-called rebels, and you know it's going to be bloody. And well, the, the blood let, is not let, on Assad's hand; it's on the, on the hands of people who are trying to overthrow him. Well, here's what I suspect will happen: there'll be a conversation between Lavrov and the Russians and Mr. Assad, and they'll say, "Now that you've seen they've killed my brother-in-law and everything, we need major troop support besides logistic support. We need more than just air defenses. We need to have boots on the ground." And they're going to bring in Russian special uh, forces. They're going to bring in Iranian special Quds force. They're going to bring in advanced our if they haven't got the full S-300 system operational that's going to be there very shortly. And we're going to start seeing a situation where if America moves its navy into position to start doing attacks on Syria or to close waterways or start to interdict ships, they're going to go to the bottom of the, as they say, with Davy Jones' locker. Well, what will happen? why people have to get mobilized now. Get your neighborhood mobilized. Get your friends, your church, your workplace. Well, this, this is this is bigger than the uh, the, the 1962 uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. What we're dealing with now is while we have this fool in the White House who wants to prance around his late night TV show, we're on the thermonuclear war. Right, because what will happen is Russia will have. They have to make two choices, okay? Russia has to make a strategic choice. Can we deal with an America that could do a preemptive strike on the Middle East and us, or will we decide to just take out America and make them capitulate early? Well, it's very dangerous. Hold on to your seats, but do some organizing. Yeah, Obama needs to go, or we will lose America and lose our future and, of course, lose the idea of what it is to be an American. We need Glass-Steagall, we need to have a proper rebuilding of infrastructure, we need to have rationality. And we need a regime change in the United States now. Yeah, and that means both parties, not just the Democrats. Both parties need to be renewed. All right, talk to you next week. Remarkable update. In Hour 3 coming up, Mike Velarde and Tim Alexander will be joining us for further deep and in-depth analysis. And by the way, those people who don't believe that the mark uh, is in the the implantable chip, Read the 1,018-page document I posted up in PDF. It's not the Health Act. It's the Act passed before that with the Health and Human Services Minister, uh, Secretary. That's where it is, and it's referenced by the Health Act. That's the chip that has to be operational by March 23, 2013.